And we have breaking news right now from Boise, Idaho. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. The jury in the Joseph Duncan death penalty trial made its decision about a half hour ago now, and they are now filing back into the courtroom. They are about to tell the judge and Joseph Duncan if Duncan will be put to death or get life in prison instead. And we want to take a live look now at the federal courthouse in Boise, where Joseph Duncan is about to learn his fate. That's happening inside the courtroom, of course, in a federal case. We cannot have cameras in the courtroom. That's why we're going to bring the decision to you live this way. The jury began their deliberations at 10 o'clock Spokane time this morning. Joseph Duncan did not give a closing argument. Instead, he sat silent like he has for much of this trial. The jury took about three hours to make their decision this morning. The jury had to decide if Duncan should be executed for killing nine-year-old Dylan Groney. Duncan admitted kidnapping Dylan and his sister Shasta in May of 2005. During the trial, as you remember, Duncan has acted as his own attorney. He did not offer any sort of defense. He did not call a single witness. In fact, in the first phase of this sentencing, he told the jury he hated them and that his plan was to rape and kill until he died. Today, during closing arguments, federal prosecutors painted one final picture of how the murder of Dylan will forever haunt his sister, Shasta, and how Dylan's father, Steve Groney, will never be able to take his son for a motorcycle ride again and that Groney only got a glimpse of the man Dylan would become. There will be no more Christmases or school photos with Dylan. The prosecution then hammered home how Duncan remains dangerous to society, saying Duncan's history is full of violence and Duncan is resourceful enough to commit further acts of violence, even in a prison setting. They also detailed three other child murders to which Duncan has confessed. The prosecutor in this case painted a picture of Duncan as being able to act on impulse or instead being able to take his time and be methodical and wait for the perfect moment to carry out his plan. And it was an elaborate plan, as we heard throughout this trial. Now, calling Duncan adaptable and dangerous was how the prosecution left their impression with the jury today. The prosecutor said Duncan reveled and celebrated his crimes. And the prosecutor reminded the jury how Dylan fought for his life to the very end. Again, we want to take a live look at the federal courthouse in Boise. This has been an 11-day trial so far. The prosecutor finished closing arguments calling for the death penalty at about 10 o'clock this morning. Duncan then had the floor, his chance to put on a defense. But instead of putting up any defense, he simply said he had no argument, leaving his fate to the nine men and three women on this jury. Now, this jury has to consider 13 pages of jury instructions today. This is the instructions here, the long, extensive list of questions they have to consider. First, they must consider the impact on the victim's family and friends and the future dangerousness of Joseph Duncan. Second, they're asked to consider any mitigating factors presented in the case, but in this case, Duncan did not present any. The jurors can also decide, though, that the crimes for which Duncan was convicted were heinous enough that he should be put to death even without considering the impact on the victim's families. There are three counts that Duncan was found eligible for the death penalty on. The first was kidnapping resulting in death. The second was count five in this trial, sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death. And the third was count seven, use of a firearm in a crime resulting in death. Again, last we heard from our reporter in the courtroom is that the, everyone was just filing in. We're told that the decision is now imminent. We will hear from it very, hear, hear it very shortly. And again, we'll go over what all of this means. Everyone involved in the case has been under a gag order since this began. All of the witnesses, all of the family members, even the Sheriff's Department in Kootenai County and the, and the folks who defended Joseph Duncan there. So we haven't heard much reaction coming out of this 11-day trial so far. Afterwards, though, we expect to hear finally from some of those people. We're hoping to hear today from Steve Groney, the father uh, of Dylan and Shasta, of course, who has been infected by all of this. We are now hearing in, for count one, that is the charge of kidnapping resulting in death, they believe Duncan is eligible for the death penalty on that count. Now, the jury had to be unanimous, and they have to be unanimous in order for him to get the death penalty. If they are not, that is when the judge steps in, and the judge would sentence Duncan to life in prison instead. This is a federal case, we want to remind you, so the only appeal Joseph Duncan has is an automatic appeal, an automatic review by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, the only other avenue he would have to appeal after that is to appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court, petition them to hear the case, though that is unlikely. Once again, count one, kidnapping resulting in death. They agreed unanimously that Duncan should get the death penalty for that case. That should be enough. This should be the, the final decision that we need to hear in this case, that Joseph Duncan will be executed for his crimes, specifically the murder of Dylan Groney in the mountains of Montana in uh, June of 2005.
Of course, this is a case that has haunted our community. A lot of people have been waiting for this day, waiting at least for a resolution, whether it was death or life in prison. And remember, Joseph Duncan is already serving three consecutive life sentences for killing the other members of Dylan's family, Brenda and Steve Groney and Mark McKenzie. Again, this is a live picture right now of the federal courthouse in Boise. This is day 11 of this trial. This has been a long trial for these jurors. They have seen horrific evidence. They have seen and heard things that they probably will never want to speak again in their lives. That probably is why it only took them three hours to reach this decision today. Very unusual for a death penalty jury to come to a decision this quickly. But apparently they did so this morning. We are told that they did stop and eat lunch today as well. So we're not sure when they actually reached the decision. They did tell the, the bailiff they had a decision at 1 o'clock today. We are hearing right now that they are now discussing count five. And that count is sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death. You remember, as we've heard throughout this case, we don't want to g give you graphic information now, but this is specifically related to the cabin video, as it's been called, the video of Joseph Duncan torturing nine-year-old Dylan Groney in that cabin in the Montana woods. That is a crime that is eligible for the death penalty, the, the second of three that they had to consider in this case. In the first case, all they had to do, the first phase of this sentencing, rather, is just decide if Duncan was eligible for the death penalty based on that. Considering the video that they all had to sit there and watch, it was not surprising that they found that Duncan was eligible for the death penalty on that charge. Again, though, we have to decide now, or the jury had to decide, rather, if that case should make him eligible, or sh he should get the death penalty for that case. Again, Joseph Duncan, a convicted sex offender who served more than 20 years in prison in Washington in the early 1980s and 90s for a rape when he was a 16-year-old boy and raped a younger boy at gunpoint. Joseph Duncan has a history of these types of crimes. In fact, he told a counselor when he was in the Department of Corrections that he molested several other children and was never prosecuted for those before that rape happened in 1980. Also in this case, they had to consider the murders of three other children for crimes for which Duncan has not been prosecuted. One was the murder of Anthony Martinez uh, in California in 1997, the other two sisters in Seattle in 1996. They were allowed to consider the evidence of those in this case, even though he has not been prosecuted for those crimes. He made his first ever confession that he committed those crimes to Shasta Groney when they were up in Montana in the woods. Shasta was the first to tell police about that just moments after she was rescued from the Denny's in Coeur d'Alene back in July of 2005. Again, the jury has already decided on count one, kidnapping resulting in death, that Duncan should die for that crime. They are now on to count five in this case, sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death. We are awaiting the jury's unanimous decision on that count. As we mentioned, an excruciating uh, case for these jurors. These jurors were actually called to duty for the selection process back in April, but it was delayed several times. We are just hearing now count five sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death. The jury agreed unanimously Joseph Duncan should be executed for that crime. They have now decided on two of the three charges that Joseph Duncan should be executed. We want to remind you one more time, this, this question has come up quite a bit as this has been going on. There is one automatic review in a federal case like this. It's the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals will automatically review the case and then Joseph Duncan's only avenue of, of appeal after that would be to the U.S. Supreme Court to petition them to ask them to hear the case, which, again, would be very unlikely. We've been talking a lot about this jury deliberation and how it, it was so short. A total, they had to decide in two separate hearings whether or not Joseph Duncan was eligible for the death penalty and whether or not he should get it. They deliberated only a total of five hours in both of those proceedings. Extremely unusual. The Timothy McVeigh jury, for example, deliberated for 11 hours over two days. That's the Oklahoma City bomber case. So 11 hours over two days. In comparison, this was really not, not much of a deliberation at all as far as time is concerned. The reason this, this one is, actually, is absolutely different from those is that you have children involved, you had video evidence of the crimes, you also had a defendant defending himself and not putting up any sort of defense at all. Joseph Duncan has had some of the best attorneys as far as death penalty cases go representing him throughout this federal process. Uh, High-profile attorneys, one of them represented Timothy McVeigh, among other people, including the, the Unabomber um, from Montana. And he decided right before this trial began that he wanted to act as his own attorney, and that's why things were delayed for so long. Uh, when he decided to act as his own attorney, the judge ordered several mental evaluations, and all of those mental evaluations came back with uh, the, pro the psychiatrist saying Joseph Duncan has no mental defect that they know of, so he was eligible to represent himself in this case. 
But again, he never called a single witness. He cross-examined very few of the prosecution's witnesses. And even though he gave a, a ranting sort of uh, closing argument in the first sentencing phase, in this phase, this morning, he did not give a closing argument. The prosecutor spoke for probably about an hour this morning, again, just d detailing the impact of this family, on this family of, of losing a young man like Dylan Groney, so young. His dad told the jury yesterday he was born with a smirk on his face, um, that he was a tender-hearted boy, that he was their teddy bear. Uh, the several family members that testified about Dylan also said Dylan was Shasta's protector, that you would rarely see the two of them apart, and that uh, Steve Groney told the jurors yesterday, you have to cherish every moment you spend with your kids because you never know uh, when something could happen to them like this, something absolutely unimaginable. We are told that they are now considering count seven. They have decided that, yes, Joseph Duncan is eligible for the death penalty on both of the aggravating factors in this case. That related to the impact on the victim's families, as we were just speaking about, and the future dangerousness of Joseph Duncan. That has been a big part of this case. They had to prove to this jury that even if he uh, was let go and even was back in the prison system, that he was way too much of a danger to himself and to others, that they could not let that happen. The prosecutor saying the only remedy for a person like this that has committed these heinous crimes is the death penalty. So the jury again agreeing on that. Just to recap, they've been through two of the specific charges so far, uh, those being kidnapping resulting in death, and now we're just hearing, just as I'm speaking, that count seven, use of a firearm resulting in death. Again, the jury unanimously agrees Joseph Duncan should be executed for that crime. That relates specifically to Duncan shooting Dylan Groney in the woods in Montana. At one point in this case, he, he tried to portray that that had been an accident, but then said in his closing arguments last week, that was no accident. I told Shasta it was an accident so that she would comply with me. It was no accident. So once again, all three charges they had to consider they all agreed unanimously Joseph Duncan will be executed specifically for the murder of nine-year-old Dylan Groney all they're doing now is signing the paperwork certifying the verdict that is it for this jury this jury that has been through 11 days of agony listening to horrific evidence seeing uh, this horrific video that they had to see and once again after three years of waiting and uncertainty for so many families and, and so much of our community Joseph Duncan will be put to death. His next step is likely um, this automatic review and then possibly prosecution in California for another murder there. Eventually, Joseph Duncan will go to the federal death row in Terre Haute, Indiana, where he will be executed for his murder of Dylan Groney. We will be gathering reaction now. We also have our live blog up right now on KXLY.com. If you want to write in and post your comments, we're getting participation from all over the country. And we want to thank you for joining us. Please join us throughout the day on KXLY.com and right here on KXLY 4 News at 5 and 6 for reaction to this update. One more time, Joseph Duncan will be executed for the murder of Dylan Groney.